come on in. We're all waiting for you. I'm getting me a tea bag out of my little package. Get it right here. There's some good tea. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. You got to get you some tea. It's on our website. Come on in. Oh, that's some good smelling stuff. Uh, my sister Patty is getting her social security stuff all straightened out with her new name before she piles her taxes and th stuff. And she's stuck at the social security office. It's, uh, it's, it's the do it now principle kicks in today. I'm telling you what, Ben and I have been doing the do it now principle uh, today too. And it's just always fun. I don't know why my camera keeps turning. There we go. Let's get this going. Hearts for hydrating. Yep. So get on in here. You know, the do it now principle is one of the best principles in the whole world. Let me explain that to you. The do it now principle you get things done. Robert went to the grocery store today and I said, why don't you get a, a beef roast? And he got us a little rump roast and I made some great yummy gravy. I make the best gravy in the world. And I put some onions in it and browned the, the roast, put in the crock pot, added some, uh, some potatoes and some carrots and some onions and I cut up a little tiny cabbage and put on top of it and you know I don't know that it's going to be done for dinner because <laughs> he didn't get back from the store until almost 1 30 so um anyway we'll see I'm going to dig in my little basket that my sister-in-law made me and I'm going to find us a topic let's see what I can find Mm. This is a good one. This is a real good one. Yeah, we got 200 people in here. And this is a really good topic. Leanne and I wrote about this in Body Clutter. And the topic is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. You know, sometimes we get stuck in this rut, and we've been in a lot of ruts. Y'all know that. We get stuck in a rut of uh, not wanting to forgive the people that have wronged you in the past. You know, we have to forgive. The Bible teaches us seven times 70 for being wronged, and that's just for one person. And when you forgive, and I was listening to Joel Osteen Sunday night. He, Robert calls in my little preacher <laughs> and he comes on at, at 1130 on Sunday night and I usually listen to him. I record it if I don't get a chance to get a chance to, to watch him. But he was talking about Tyler Perry and how Tyler Perry had been homeless and he had this idea for Medea, the character that he plays in his movies and he was not doing well. He was living out of his car, done that, been there, done that. And he said that Tyler told him that it wasn't until he forgave his father that he began to see a change in his life. That that unforgiveness that he held in, held in his heart for his father was was horrible was was weighing him down and I understood that I totally understood that because at one point in my life if if my father had walked in the door of the the place where I worked I would have walked out the back so one year 
I, I realized that I had this unforgiveness because he abandoned us. He abandoned Susan. He abandoned Clifton. He has, he abandoned all of his children. And it wasn't until later in my life that I realized, Justin was about nine years old, I think. And I realized that that anger and hatefulness and unforgiveness was weighing me down. So I started praying for him. I started praying that my heart would be open to forgiving him. And out of the blue one day, Patty calls me and she says, Daddy wants to see you. He's at my house. And I said, well, tell him to come to my house. And he came and he brought my little brother, Clifton. Clifton was probably 18 months old at the time. He was a toddler. That's why I knew he was around. I never met Susan when I was um, a young wife and mother. And But Patty said, what's happened to you? And I said, well, I've been praying about changing my attitude toward Daddy. And... I did. I did. And he died in 1992. And I was able to clear the air with him and tell him I realized that I had been brainwashed as a child to dislike him and to think that he was all wrong. But I knew that there were wrongs on both sides. I, and, and I forgave him. I forgave him for abandoning us. Now, abandonment is a bad thing. It, it creates orphans out of little girls that need a daddy, you know, and little boys that need a daddy. It creates, you know, you're an orphan. Uh, Clifton was blessed to be adopted by a wonderful man when his mother remarried. Susan, you know, it, it leaves your children orphans when one of the parents leaves you and it, it hurts you forever and you have to forgive them. You have to forgive the pain that you've suffered. You have to forgive them. And I know it sounds hard to do, but when you pray about it, when you pray for them, whether they're dead or alive, when you pray, for them. You can release that angst and that hatefulness and unforgiveness that you feel in your life. And it is going to lift you up like you wouldn't believe. That forgiveness is probably, it's clutter in your life. It's keeping you from going forward because it, 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 you, you're, you think about the past and you keep reliving the past when all you got to do is let it go. As the song says, let it go. Let it go so you can go forward, not live with that pain. And it is it's so difficult. to, it, But it is easy. When you can, it's, where's my little switch? You can flip a switch off and on. You can forgive as easy as flipping the switch. You just have to do it. You may have to write everything down that, that you've been wronged by, put it in a little pan or in your fire pit and set fire to it and watch it go up in smoke. But you have to let it go for you because having these bad feelings about somebody is like you taking the poison you taking the poison to kill them. But what you're really doing is you're killing yourself. You're killing yourself. So pray about it. Pray for your enemy. You can do this. Believe me, you can do this. If you'll send um, an email to flylady at flylady.net with prayer in the subject line, I'll send you an outline on how to pray for your enemy. Real simple, how to pray for them. And it, it's as easy as setting the tone, 
you got to set the stage. You got to set the environment. For me, I love to pray in the bathtub. I, I get in a bubble bath. I get surrounded by the warmth of the water. And I just start praying, praying, praying. And when you, you set the stage and I pray with song a lot of times. I, I pray with a, a beautiful song that comes to mind and it, it makes you know, the words of the song touch me. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll never forget one, I, one time I was having some hard feelings toward a woman and, and she had hurt my husband when he was running for judge one time. And this woman, she had some issues, but I was having a hard time with her. And so I was trying to pray, pray for her and I couldn't do it. But all my ladies came together and they helped me. They helped me to set the stage so that I could pray. So I didn't know how I could pray for her. And I, I got in a tub and I started singing. And what I sang was sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Oh, it was. And all of a sudden, I'm, I may not have been able to pray for her as a person, but I could pray to keep evil away from her, to keep evil from coming at her. And when I did that, I released it. It was just the most amazing. And so when Robert got home from court that day, I said, he said, well, what'd you do? And I said, well, I prayed for, for judge, what's your name? And he said, you did what? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, what time was that? And I said, well, it's about 1030 in the morning. He said at 1030, I had a song come into my head. And I said, he said it was a song from Mendelssohn's Midsummer's Night's Dream. And it was about little snakes being run away little snakes and it's a little snake song from Mendelssohn and I had a friend who taught opera in Germany and we only had the opera in in German and I didn't know what the words were and I sent her an email message and she told me the words to the to the song to the song and it was about getting rid of the evil snakes to go away so you just have to pray. It happened at the same time. Now, this is the Holy Spirit working. It happened at the same time that I was praying. That I was praying. And we just looked at each other, just in shock, that it could happen that way. So, praying for others that have harmed you in some way. She hadn't harmed me, but she harmed my husband, which is the same as me. What she did, she filed for his seat when she had a seat to run for uh, uh, on the court. She filed for his seat at the very last minute. So he was in a primary with her and he won. He won. Because, and I, uh, because he was the one supposed to do it. And I prayed for her. I've let her, I let her go. Let her go. Because that's the best way to do it. You can let it go. Flip the switch of unforgiveness in your life. Forgive those that have harmed you. Don't let that anger and resentment weigh heavy on you. Because that poison only hurts you. You have to let it go. Because you're the one that needs to live an abundant life and bless others with that abundance. Well, folks, our time's up. Here's to letting go of the pain and unforgiveness that's in your life. 
not saying ugly words, saying wonderful things, blessing others with your kindness and generosity. Here's to letting it go. A couple announcements. The Fly Lady Complete Cleaning Package is going away. We're gonna. It's not going to be anymore. We're going to... On, sep- on February the 14th, it will be the end of it. And the best gift you can give your husband is to tell him what you want for Valentine's Day. Don't say, I don't want anything. Because if he shows up with nothing, you're going to get your feelings hurt. You don't want to do that. Uh, Ben's on here right now. Ben's on here. So, folks. Get your... Maybe you want a water bottle for Valentine's. This is a gift that will keep you hydrated. Drink up your water. Drink your tea, folks. Drink up. The, the, the best deal we have in the whole fly shop is the Back to Basics package. That is a mop, a broom, the swish and swipe set with, uh, which is a rubber swisher, the vase, and... Um, three purple rags. It's a great package. A on a rubber scrubber. The aqua one is pretty. Yep, it is. Anyway, folks, I love you all. Let's let go of the unforgiveness in our lives, and not have bad feelings toward those people. You don't have to even think about them. Once you let it go, it's gone. And when it keeps coming back up, you probably haven't forgiven them. So let let it go. Yeah, the, the code is back to basics for anything else in the fly shop that isn't already deeply back number two basics. So folks, have a great rest of your evening. I'm going to go get some things done. Let it go. We got a chapter in body clutter too. All about letting go of that that stuff that you're holding in. Let it go. Love you all. I will talk to you tomorrow morning. Bye.